It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition, and it lies between the pit of students' fears and the summit of their knowledge. This is a dimension of boredom. It is an area in which we call the COVID zone. Nothing says high school more than 60-year-old television references. You are now entering the COVID zone. Our journey today brings us to the world of taxation. What do taxes pay for? How are they collected? What different levels of government are there? So this particular chapter, we're gonna talk all about taxation at its three major levels, federal, state, and local. So let's get into it. So what we're gonna begin with are the different levels of government. Local, state, federal. How do they collect taxes? What are those taxes paid for? Do all taxes get pooled together and then everybody gets to pull from it or are they different levels? Well, let's get into those answers. And let's start with the federal level first. So the federal level of taxation goes to the federal government. That's also gonna be the largest tax uh, collection in the United States is going to be going to the federal government. So examples of this would be income tax. So when you get a paycheck and the money's already been taken out, that's called a withholding tax. We're gonna talk more about that. That comes straight out of your income. That gets split into two different categories and most of it is gonna to go to the federal level and then another chunk is gonna to go to the state level. Another form of a federal tax for the nation would be capital gains tax, payroll tax, which goes to pay for social security and Medicare. These are federal level taxation collections. Now, what are the big things that uh, federal taxes are spent on? Well, in this particular unit, you're going to get your opportunity to get your hands on the actual federal budget and make decisions about it, real life decisions. So what is our federal money spent on? A number of different things, but four particular programs take up nearly 70% of the budget. That would be Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and interest on the national debt. So we're gonna get into more detail about the federal budget when we do our federal budget project at the end of this chapter, but it's something to keep in your mind moving forward. Now, the federal pool is going to pay for federal programs, like I mentioned, Social Security, National Defense, Medicare, these are all big national expenditures. Now the second level would be the state level. For us, that's in California. In the state, the taxes we pay towards the state go towards state-funded programs. So. We are collecting the tax in the state of California through income tax, through sales tax, and a number of other different things. And then these pools of taxation pay for state level things. In California, the biggest expenditure we have is for what we're doing right now, education. That's the biggest state expenditure for the state of California. And it's collected from the state taxes to pay for that. Yes, the federal government does kick in some money for public education on the states, but the states front the vast majority of the cost. Then you got your local level. These uh, taxes are collected locally and they go towards things that are locally provided to you as the citizen of that local community. So this could be in the form of sales tax once again. Different counties have different sales taxes, just like different states have different sales taxes. Property taxes, one of the reasons that uh, the houses around Oak Park High School are so valuable is because of the school system. The school system adds equity, adds property value to the homes that surround the area. So they have higher property taxes to pay for that school system that also provides the high value of their homes in the first place. So property taxes, sales taxes, these would be collected amongst uh, many other different local taxes. And they're going to pay for city programs, city parks, uh, local schools, etc. So you got to make sure that you keep your three levels of federal, state, and local government separated, as well as what types of taxes go into which entity and how those entities spend that money. 
Now, there are many different kinds of taxes that have many different names, so we're going to break down some of the big ones that would have an impact on, on your lives moving forward, not to diminish all collection of taxation or how it's spent. In fact, most people have a very large misconception about, number one, how taxes are collected, and number two, how they're spent. So, let's talk about different types of taxes. Now there's one, it's a slang term, a sin tax. So keep in mind that we can do something through our tax code and our laws called social engineering. And we can incentivize or decentivize certain types of behaviors based on the tax code or the laws that exist. I'll give you some examples. In the United States post World War II, we wanted to encourage people to have children, to have families. So what we did is we gave a benefit in the form of a tax write-off for having a dependent, a child that depends on you, to encourage that behavior. You can also have disincentivizing behavior. So you could put a giant tax on cigarettes or alcohol if you want to de-incentivize that behavior by putting a heavy penalty on it. So for instance, in the United States, we have a Surgeon General warning on the, back, on the side of a pack of cigarettes that says, if you smoke this, it's been shown that you're very likely gonna get cancer if you continue this behavior, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then we put what we call a sin tax on it. Now, in New York, a pack of cigarettes became so expensive in a time period in which a lot of people were smoking in the 80s and the 90s that that price pushed people away from that type of behavior. So we can social engineer things through tax law and through regular law to incentivize behavior or to uh, decentivize that behavior as well. It's an important concept known as social engineering that you should understand. So a sin tax would be on something that we would deem in our society a sinful behavior, but not illegal. So you put a high tax on it to try and make it not as prominent or prevalent in society, but we are acknowledging that it is not illegal, so this thing will still exist. In Australia, they, take, they took such drastic steps to try and get people from stopping smoking that on the side of their cigarettes, they'll put black lungs or people smoking out of their throat, and a pack of cigarettes is roughly $25 by the time you get done paying for all the taxation in it. So we, as a society, can gear behavior in one direction or gear it away from another direction simply by putting it in the tax law or simply by changing the laws about it. Now, what is the incidence of taxes as far as it applies to this class? It's when you bundle up all of the taxes you pay in the year and it's the final price. The final amount of money you're gonna pay in taxation would be your incidence of tax. Now, in our tax code, which is a very, very lengthy and difficult, intentionally difficult set of rules to follow. Uh, one of the hardest classes I ever took in my life was at UC Santa Barbara and it was federal and state law. The federal state law book was about 2000 pages long and, or the federal book was about 2000 pages long and the state level is about 2000 pages long as well. And then those laws are fluid, they're changing all the time. So sometimes you're getting updates while you're tearing pages out. So this tax law is written in a very, very difficult manner that most people can't understand. That's why you need CPAs or accountants oftentimes, but that's not how taxation started. It wasn't supposed to be so complicated. Now, in our tax code, there are many, many things we call tax loopholes. And tax loopholes are your maneuvering to try and not pay as much tax as you would otherwise, or in some cases, no tax at all. So for instance, your mega corporations, your big giant ones. We're not talking about small business. We're talking like your Amazons, your Apples, your Netflix, your Facebook, your Googles, all of those, Tesla, these are your giant, giant mega corporations. Very few of them paid $1 in income tax as a company. Now what they do to avoid paying income tax is they'll take anything that would have been profit and they're going to reinvest it into their company where they're gonna pay themselves out bonuses so it looks like they're not profitable as their company gains value. So what their accountants are sitting around and doing is looking at the tax law and figuring out how to not pay any taxes. Now these corporations still pay taxes, sales tax, property tax, etc., but they don't pay any income tax if they've got their high powered accountants working on it. Amazon, for instance, has paid virtually zero dollars in income tax over the last 15 years. That doesn't mean Amazon hasn't paid other taxes. They have, but they do not pay income tax through clever maneuvering through the accounting laws. So these are called tax loopholes. 
Now the two taxes that most Americans are incredibly familiar with because it has an impact on their daily lives would be that of individual income tax and that of sales tax. So let's start with individual income tax. Most of my students don't have jobs, some of you do. If you do, you get a pay stub. On that pay stub, it says what your gross pay would have been without taxes and then what your net pay is after the taxes. So those of you that get paychecks already have seen this process where a chunk of money is going to different entities based on the categories and based on the amount you made as well. So an individual income tax is something we call a withholding tax, which means the tax comes out before you even see it. Now you get an itemized printout of how much taxation has been taking out and then at the end of the taxable season, December 31st for most people, although you can move your date around depending on uh, preferences or needs and extensions, etc. But at the end of the year, then you settle up with the federal government. And what they do is they give you two options. You can do itemized deductions or you can do your standard deduction. And what they figure out is based on your income and how much money you paid, does the federal government owe you money, which is called a refund? Do you owe the federal government more money which happens a lot of time in the case of 1099 to independent contractors, or are you even with the federal and state governments at the end of the year? Most people, most Americans get a tax refund. Now, most people also get really excited about their tax refund. Oh, we're gonna have a great vacation. Oh, we're gonna do this. But keep in mind that money was already yours. And if you had it up front and you knew what you were doing with it, you could invest it and make interest on it more so than you would have got in the form of a tax return in the first place. So keep in mind, a tax return was your money to begin with. It's just settling up with the governments, both federal and state, at the end of the year to decide how much you get back. It's much easier to give people money back if you're the federal government than it is to ask them for more money. That's why oftentimes they're going to overtax initially a little bit and then give you all the extra money back in the form of your tax return. Now, the next one, all of us became very familiar with when we spent our very first dollar. You go to the uh, convenience store down at the end of the street, and you wanna buy something for a dollar, and you find out when you get to the counter, it's a dollar seven. Where'd that extra seven cents come from? That's sales tax. So all of you are experts in sales tax already. Every receipt has the sales tax listed for both state and local governments. I am standing right now at the edge of Ventura County. If I drove two freeway exits towards Los Angeles, I'm gonna pay a different sales tax than I would in Ventura County. So sales tax is general tax levied on most consumer purchases. And it is a flat tax, which is a portion of each dollar that you spend towards the amount of that item. So if you spend $1, it's gonna be seven cents. Spend $100, it's gonna be $7. If you're gonna spend $1,000, so on and so forth, depending on the sales tax rate in your county. And our journey concludes today with our last two terms, which would be a withholding tax and a POS tax, point of sale tax. And again, let's refer back to the last slide that we just saw. A withholding tax example, which is something you'll need to know for the exam, would be income tax. It's taken out of your check before you even see it, and at the end of the year, you settle up with the governments, federal and state. And then you have a point of sale tax. An example of this would be sales tax. If you went to Chipotle for lunch, when you bought your burrito bowl, at that point, they paid for the price of the burrito bowl, and then they added the taxation on top of it. That would be a point of sale tax. So, this is the beginning of this chapter in which we're gonna talk a lot about taxes. You're gonna have a federal budget, budget project that's going to be associated with this unit, and you're gonna be experts on the federal budget by the end of this unit. So CompuBox, you know what to do now. Let's play this out.